Compton in the streets. There's something about these LA streets. The bar to raise it. It's all about the roses with the swagger. Ain't you wanna have some food, son? He's here, 15-year vet, six-time All-Star, DeMar DeRozan joins the show, and great friend of Lou Will, which means, DeMar, we need something. We need dirt. We need a story. He's a very cool cucumber, and he gives us nothing. What can you tell me? Oh, if he don't give you nothing, I'm definitely showing. I ain't going to give you nothing. <laughs> so, if he ain't give you approval, I can't either. <laughs> Well, it is it, is it weird to see him? I told you, it ain't nothing to give. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's good. It's definitely weird to see. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it, but it's cool to see at the same time. You know what I mean? Even I even make fun of him being, you know, the coach <laughs> of his daughter's team. You know what I mean? It's just, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a sight to see. You know what I mean? I love, I love to see it though, man. <laughs> All of his responsibilities. He's got a lot going on right now. I love um, it, man. <laughs> okay, Demar. Obviously, the season doesn't end uh, ideally with the play-in loss and all of that. But you, you know, you've been doing this. I want to know when the season ends for you. Is there a as a decompress period? Do you immediately go on a quick vacation, come back? Do you even watch the playoffs? Like, how do you handle the start of your off season? You know, it's crazy. Like when we lose, it's only a handful of people that can call me. I think Lou called me a couple of days after, asked me to come on the show. <laughs> He the only phone call I answered. I swear, it's only probably like seven people phone calls I answered. And Lou was one of them when he called me, I think, not too long after about doing the show or whatever. Um, but I kind of just I kind of just get away from the game a little bit, um, take some time to myself, and kind of get back in the zone and just being a father more more so than anything. Hmm. But, um, yeah, I just get away from everything. I kind of don't watch the first couple games because I'd be, I'd be that pissed off not playing. Um, but, yeah, I just take time to myself. Have you, uh, has any been, any of these series been standing out to you or do you root for players, teams, or are you just watching? I mean, all of them been, it's been great. The competition level is, is incredible to watch, man, especially all these young guys. You know, you see a guy like Brunson putting up 40 points a night. You see Ant Edwards coming out. You, you would think he was a 10 year vet with the swag he coming out uh, playing with, you know? Just being a fan of the game being kind of awesome to me just to watch every single series. You know, even OKC, those young guys competing every single night, man. It's just a cool thing to see when, you know, you get back in a fan perspective of, of things and, you know, just watch the game. You know, uh, every series been great. Except for whoever bought it. I got a... <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Yep. Straight up. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> uh, Debo, I got, a, I got a couple questions for you. I know you're going into uh, you're going into free agency this offseason. What's the what's the vibes like in Chicago? Are you holding your cars close, trying to see how it play out, or is that somewhere you would like to return back to? It's definitely you know somewhere I like to return to. I think more so than anybody. You know, when the job ain't done with me, Lou. You know, no matter the how tough the the situation may look, I'm one of those guys that try to stick it through and try to make something out of nothing. You know, and you know um, the city is great. I love the city. The organization been great, you know, so it's definitely a place I, I, I would love to return to and just, you know, um, take care of unfinished business. And, you know, you know, we personal homies and we have these, we have a lot of conversations about um, life and the kids and the pressures of dealing with, dealing with everything. And you wrote a book, Above the Noise. Um, you do your, you do your, uh, do your show. Uh, dinners with Demar, and you talk about mental health, and you talk about just the rigors of going through an NBA schedule, de- dealing with lifestyle, and having that balance of family. I just wanted to give you a, a, a platform to expand on um, the things that you've been trying to get out to people in your message. Man, I appreciate that, man. It's just you know, it's been a journey, man. Like, um, like it's one of those things that it comes with time that you know we go through so much as as athletes, um, as human, as men. Um, that we don't necessarily speak about. You know, um, I just remember our time together, all the conversations we used to have. And, you know, I know you talked, this one thing I could, I can mention, you talked about, you know, being a lot of times when you was going through, you was going through something. I remember you was ready to hang it up a few times. And, you know, we had to have a conversation mm-hmm. and, and talk you out of it. And next thing you know, you get two six man um, awards. And sometimes you need that, you know, um, that voice that you could kind of lean on and talk to. So just me trying to open up and be that and, and give it inspiration and hope and light 
from a mental health standpoint that, you know, have such a stigma on it that make it seem like you, you weak or whatever it may be, just trying to break that stigma more than anything. So, you know, I've been through a lot. I made it out of Compton, California. So I feel like my story that I could tell could, could help so many people. So to me, it becomes bigger than basketball. That's awesome. Damar, you're from LA, like you said, from Compton, played at USC. The Lakers are looking for a free agent this summer with your exact <laughs> skill set. I know growing up uh. I know growing up in Orlando, if I ever had a chance to play on the Magic, I would have jumped yeah. up. Is that something that you as a kid like would, would die to do, playing for that purple and gold? Is that something that you would keep your, you know, your options open this summer? I mean, when I when I was a kid, every, everybody know I'm a Kobe guy. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. always been a Kobe guy, been a Laker fan since day one. You know, um, you can't never say no about playing home, especially for playing, uh, you know, for a historic team like the Lakers. So, you know, time will tell. We'll see where the cars fall. Until then, you know, um, I see what happens. You know, I'm mean, always want to be where I'm wanted. I know what I'm gonna do from there. So we'll see how I play out. Also, I got a side. I got a side note, Demar. I played for Billy D in college too. And when I first went there, I thought he was the biggest asshole, bro. When I first got listen, there, I- listen. You know how many stories <laughs> Billy didn't tell me about you, and it'd be, it's the funniest. It's, the, yes. yo, he didn't. I didn't heard every story. Trust me. So whatever you say, Billy probably already uh, told me. <laughs> This man was ruthless until I became, you know, yeah. I went in like as an arrogant little bastard. Is he, does yeah. he still keep that kind of attitude and that kind of energy? Or ah, now that- that's, that's what's crazy because the stories he tell me, even like a lot of older guys that play for him, the stories that I hear about Billy don't match up to who Billy is Uh-oh. now. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the coolest person. He done got in the old, world. man. Like, yeah, yeah, you know like, when them coaches I, get old, they chill out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking about Billy. So cool, man. Like, I, I love, I love Billy, man. He come in there chewing his gum, and, and he just oh, chews it hard. Yeah, true. He be chewing the hell out of some gum, but it's like <laughs> Billy cool, man. But trust me, I hear all those, I hear all those stories, man. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, did you guys notice Chandler said he was an arrogant little ass, like as if that was the past? Yeah, well played, see, Chandler. Everyone, well everyone played. Grows up. Everyone he told grows me he up. sent you home. He told me he sent you home or something like. Jamar, no. this man t- pulled me into his office one time and called my parents, put it on speakerphone, called the coach of Arizona State and said, hey, man, I need you to take Chandler Parsons. He's transferring. He's a he's a, he's a <laughs> I'm like, damn. Oh, Didn't even, no warning, what? nothing. That's yeah, awesome. he, told him, um, <laughs> he was ruthless. He can't, bro. listen, he can't do that now in that, he can't do that now with that no, portal. No, he can't do it Anybody now. else he no. tried like that, they <laughs> out of here. Oh, yeah? <laughs> out of here. Oh, can't do good. it now, bro. Damn. Damar, you grew Ooh. up a Kobe fan. I know you've carried his legacy uh, through his shoes as well. And that relationship really evolved as your career went on as well. What kind of impact did Kobe have on you growing up and now still to this day? Um, I mean, he, he gave me a different type of mental edge and approach to, to the game, um, to preparation, you know, especially in the off season. You know, a lot of my, um, you know, kinks and everything that I got my work ethic I got from Kobe, you know, getting up at four, working out in the morning, you know, pushing myself, trying to, you know, find different ways to, you know, channel your your, your mental edge. You know, I, I see Chandler in the gym every day when I'm in there boxing, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I'm trying something every, different, you know, every year to just have that mental edge, you know, on players going, in, going into the off season. And that's one thing I learned from Kobe, just trying something, new all the time pushing yourself so I, I like the unwritten rules about the shoes obviously you were the kobe's we we had a uh, jordan mclaughlin on talking about he wears the Kyrie's, but when he plays Kyrie, god no you cannot wear those shoes so when you played kobe did you keep them on or did you switch for those games i kept them on i told i told the story before it was one game where i didn't keep them on like because i remember i played against vince and vince was like you wear kobe's when you play against kobe so i took offense <laughs> to it like Nah, I ain't gonna do it next time. So next time I played Kobe, I wore some Jordans. I wore some Jordans tens. As soon as I walked on the floor, Kobe cussed the hell out of me, right, mm-hmm. right, like or tip tip off. And I, uh, <laughs> ever since then, I, I stayed with my Kobe's on. I never, I never wore Jordans again. Oh no, man, <laughs> was, keen eye. Keen, do you guys? I, and this goes yeah. for everyone. Do you remember the shoes you have on, like in in peak moments or milestone moments? Like you drop fifty. Do you remember what you had on tomorrow? 
Nah, because I, I changed I changed my shoes a lot at halftime. Like, oh. nah, I, saw, I don't I don't remember. I wouldn't remember. They start okay, running together. Enough. All them games, they start running together after a while. I promise yeah, yeah. you. After, Especially when you're yeah. done. Wait till you, listen, wait till you're officially done and somebody asks you something to reminisce on. You're going to be like, uh. <laughs> yeah. They all run together. Every all single run one. together. Damar, year 15 this past year, you averaged 24 points a game and you play 79 games, which is bonkers. Yeah. So there's no load management with you. Uh, you're, yeah. How's your body stay up? Well, you mentioned that I see you in the gym boxing. Is that that's more of an off-season workout to stay in shape? But how have you been able to stay so healthy and in shape? You know, at this point of your career, 15 years is, is nuts. Bro, I, I don't do anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm with my kids. Just hope. I'm sleep. I'm working out. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't do nothing. You know what I mean? So it gives me plenty of time to either recover or try new things for recovery, take care of my body, try to eat the, try to eat the right way. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult just to be disciplined. You know what I mean? But I think for me, I just want to, you know, I try to hold it down for the older guys more so than anything and, and just show that, you know, this age thing is not a, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a thing. I think I let them the lead in minutes this year. You know what I mean? So um, hmm. just, just trying to prove that, you know, once you take care of yourself, you can play as long as you want at a high level, as much as you want, you know? So that's another just stigma I'll be trying to break. You know, I, I even text CP throughout the season and tell him like, and we got to hold it down for the older guys, even though I'm not, I don't think I'm that old, especially those guys, you know, um, but just trying to hold it down more so than anything. I, I think from my standpoint, having oh, friends yeah. like Lou that I play with, that's retired, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it gives me the motivation to where it's like, I'm not ready to do the talk show yet. I mean, 15 years. Yeah, it's, it's coming. It's, it's coming. It's, <laughs> is, is there like a goal? Like, do you want to get to 20 years? Mm. Like, is there like, do you want to play for three? Do you even think about that yet? Or is this just like take one season at a time, day by day, and just hopefully you stay healthy? To be honest with you, I'm be honest with you. I, I, that's a great question. I don't want to play 20 years. I'll be honest. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't. I just, I just, I don't. You know what I mean? Just for the standpoint of like, you know, I miss my kids, you know. I kind of, I kind of love being normal at times, you know. Uh, Twenty is is a lot, you know. It just and I care too much for the game. I I would never want to cheat the game, you know. And I think by the time I get to year twenty, you know, I'm uh, you know, I, I nah, nah, I just I'm just <laughs> so I, no, I, not twenty. Okay, a tw five more years is a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot saying it, but it does feel I, like a lot. It's a lot, you, you know. It's, it's a lot. Like, um, it's a ton, especially when you get close to it. Yeah, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, back in January, you had a tweet out. Somebody's going to score 100 before the season's over. That happened to yeah. be the day that Luca had the 73 and Booker dropped the 62. Um, yeah. Just take a guess. If somebody's going to do it, who's it going to be? Got to be somebody who can get to the free throw line at a high level. Somebody who shoot a lot of threes. Um... Uh, say a healthy MB. I can like get it. I like these two though. Hmm. Yes, yeah, I Those think ain't rolling. I like. I think. Yeah. I think Luca do it because Joel won't shoot enough threes to get there. True. Yeah, Luca can see get him. nights where he knocks down 12, 10, 12, 10 threes. He has twenty plus free throws. I can see Luca getting it. No, that's yeah, gonna be see if that happens. Uh, I, I, I like, like Luca getting it. Somebody, somebody gonna get close to it. I'm telling you, the Shit, way it got, it gotta I, be somebody on the Knicks as many minutes as they play. Shit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> what's gonna happen first? A hundred point game, or a let's throw Bronson in there, or a quadruple double from Wimby? Oh, uh, Wimby, Wimby. <laughs> big money, Wimby sure. big money. Wait, go. I have sure. I, the whole. The 100 point thing is big because Lou, we did not know uh, when we started working together that he's a conspiracy theorist. He does not believe yeah. in the Wilt Chamberlain 100 point game. So, uh, we, he know do that. you? He, he know I don't believe in that. Show, Show us, us the, the tape. tape. He know that. <laughs> That's why Lou, my guy. He know. See? He know. <laughs> he know it's, two, it's two Wilt stats I, I, I want to I take to the competition committee and. and mm -hmm. We gotta we gotta audit the files. It's two stats he got in his life that I, I want some proof of. 
What's the other and one? one is bas- is basketball. Yeah. One's basketball related and one's not basketball related. What's the other one? What could it be? <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, listen, Wilt didn't get close to 25,000 nothing outside of points <laughs> in rebounds. <laughs> and that's all. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Yeah, Are you the only? Is he the only one that whole, thinks it? That's a whole other. No, no, that's a whole I other show. That, I think no, the hundred no, points, I'm, Chandler. I'm, the, not the women. I'm, the hundred points. points, maybe the women. The women. He's gassing so hard. No way. <laughs> yeah. Could be a debate. Yeah, yeah. Demar's not touching it. That's fair. I wouldn't. This is a weird conversation. I ain't about yeah. to have me get attacked on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. You, you stay out of it. Me and Chandler go viral enough. I go viral the by being with Chandler. Up. I know. <laughs> Demar, you're, you're arguably the best mid-range shooter in the NBA. Um, obviously, there's a lot of young players now that shoot a lot of threes. But is there someone you see in the game today that you feel like you know what this guy's also the master of the mid-range? Young guy. Um, I mean, I see glimpse in it. You know what I mean? I think, you know, even last night I seen Ant, Ant you know. Pump fake the three, took one dribble in, shot a bank shot, mid range. You know, you, you you don't see many guys, you know, you kind of see the pump fake sidestep for a three. So when I see little things like like that in guys' game, it, it just shows that, you know, the mid range is not necessarily dead. You know, it's just a, it's just so it's so high frequency of three shot that guys when they do shoot mid range kind of get overlooked. But it's a lot of young guys, like even even J B, even Br- Brunson, you know, the way he, he played in the mid range. Yeah, SGA mm. is incredible in the mid-range, you know? And when you see a lot of those young guys, it, it's just a reminder that, you know, the mid, mid-range is, isn't dead. You know, it's just a narrative that's so easy to get caught up in because you see so many threes shot, but the pace of the game is at such a high level that you don't see it so often that guys just, you know, get into the mid-range shots. But definitely those young guys, Shea, uh, Brunson, um, JT, JT playing, it's incredible in the mid-range. Um, so seeing those guys, you know, it's, it's definitely fun to watch. Shit, SGA beat the Mavs the other night with just mid-range alone. <laughs> mid-range, get into a spot. Get into a spot. You can't touch. Body him. Get into a spot. Pump fake. Uh, just, it's incredible to watch, you know? Yes, sir. D, I know, um, you know, we started fatherhood as as girl dads. And, and last yeah. year, you took the girls out to the uh, to the WNBA All-Star game. And JJ is getting in the hoop. I know your girls is starting to pick that ball up. What's that? What's that feeling like to be able to take them to go experience WNBA events, and they can see some of the things that they can look forward to, and how the game is growing. Man, it's it's, it's incredible just to see um, their eyes light up. You know, because they really don't care about dad too much. So when they see <laughs> someone, another girl playing, it's it's like their eyes light oh, up. Oh, so hold on. Hello, Debo. So you you going you going through you going through the same thing I'm going through. So like, I'm only cool when it benefits them. Other than that, yeah. I'm the lamest guy they could ever they could yeah. ever meet. But when I can yeah. go when I can do something for them, I'm the cool parent. Oh, uh, for sure. You going like, through I, that? Yes. I, the other day, I um, took the girls to escape rooms for for Dr. Birthday, and you know, I just felt like an outcast being with the girls. You know what I mean? It's like. It's like Dr. <laughs> calling me like, "Come on, bro!" Like I said, "What?" She said, "No, come on, Daddy, we gotta go in here." I said, "Oh, I'm dad now." And y'all want me to go? Wow! <laughs> but you know, what I mean, Def- definitely going through it, though. Oh, that's cute. By the way, speaking of your daughter, I think NBA fans got a fun introduction uh, to her yeah. distraction techniques last yeah. season. Did she enjoy that run? Of what? massive popularity. <laughs> to this day, she it's been places to this day I've been, whether I, she's with me or I'm by myself, and people just say, I, I love your daughter. Like she's she's incredible. Like you couldn't tell her nothing when that first happened. You couldn't tell her nothing. Like it's it, and, and that's a cool top moment that I'm, oh, yeah, I'm, it, it's a cool moment that I could forever share with her with that because you know it, it, it mean it, it meant so much to her. You know, what I mean it changed like her confidence, her, her everything, you know, it just, it just showed a different light of her. So that was cool just to witness and have that moment with her because I said no about five, six times about her coming <laughs> to the game because I didn't want to miss her to miss school. So um, Uh-oh. It, it was, it was cool for her to, you know, have that moment. Miss school? 
Yeah. Uh, school schmool. I just didn't need that. Uh, okay, we have a debate. I think you're the perfect person to ask this of. Um, and Chandler is obsessed with this topic. Topic, of course, is basketball players to the NFL, NFL players to the NBA. Do you have thought on the rea- the reality of any of that being possible? Y'all gonna have the NFL people tagging me now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, they they upset. So we might as but well. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they upset. Oh my god, they, they upset. Um, <laughs> I had this when when the debate first came out. I had uh, me and Alex Russo always talk about di- different topics. So I sent in him because I think. You know, Alex Russo is a player I could see playing in the NFL. So we had a look back and forth, like, you know, he was like, no chance we got 30 players in the lead. I said, man, I can name about 10 right now that could play in the NFL. What you mean? So we started going back and forth. Then, you know, he agreed with me. Then over the next couple of days, I started seeing everybody else, you know, comment and everything. Um, Mm -hmm. I think basketball players could almost do anything if you give us – Two to three months to prepare for it. Okay. Um, I ju- I'm just a firm believer in that. Like, give us two or three months, we can do anything Ooh. possible. Hey. You know, so um, I think hey. we have about tw- 20 people in our league that can play in the NFL. 20. Okay. This Look, is, I'm going right. to make this, Beto, I gotta, I'm going <laughs> to make this point. I'm going to make it real quick, right? Mm. I personally know guys who dedicated their lives to basketball all the way up until their senior year, realize, you know what? This is not going to work out. I'm going to go out for the football team. And they've made handsome livings in the NFL. Okay. You've never heard of a football player playing football all the way up to high school and say, you know what? I'm going to go hoop and have an opportunity. That's all I'm going to say. That should tell you everything you need to know about the two things. I respect NFL. I respect NBA. But when it comes to somebody being able to translate over to the other sport, I think it's more likely for an NBA player to translate to a football player than so vice versa. Also, simply, just simply, simply skill, simply skill set. I know DeMar DeRozan can run a route and be a nasty wide receiver. I don't think Odell Beckham could be a starting shooting guard and hit a step back thirty footer. I just I, he can't. It's a different skill. It's it's yeah, it's. It, it, it's and there's no not to no NFL player. You know what I mean? It's just like, and granted, it's, it's no not. I think so many people take it like it's a negative thing. Of course. You know what I mean? I'd be the first to tell you, if I was a quarterback right now in the NFL and I seen Aaron Donald coming at me, I'm going to just lay down. Like, I, I oh, know. God. Y'all, y'all, you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to be see, that that's guy. that's the thing, Debo. Like, but the see, ball that's down. the thing. There <laughs> is a po- you might not be able to be the quarterback, but there is a right. position you can play. So people like sure. try tackling this person. I'm like, well, I'll just play offense. We'll try right. throwing. Yeah. Well, I just I just go play quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> you just know what I'm playing in the NBA, being a basketball player is a different type of skill set that you have to have. That's that I just. Well, what don't about think the duos? Great. Like, what about like a Charlie Ward or like a Nate Robinson? Like, there have been dudes who've done both. But yeah, for sure. Don't, I don't know how how high a level you guys are considering either one of those. Oh, I'm not going to get you in trouble. Okay, fine. One more question. I am obviously the diss track expert on this panel. Um, very much up on all things Drake Kendrick, as one is. But you were actually name drop in Kendrick. So he's talking about how Toronto didn't deserve you. First of all, what is it like to be dropped in the middle of that particular back and forth? Uh, and did you get a heads up? I try to stay out of everything <laughs> because both of, them, you know, <laughs> both of them are my friends. Um, I'm just leaving it at, you know, I'm from California. Um, it's kind you know, of awesome. Um, Smart you know, man. It's, Smart, it's, Smart it's, man. It's, I mean, at the end of the day, I think to see two of the biggest it's all stars competition. It's competition. Yes, 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 go yes. at it, you know, at this high level, I think we've never seen nothing like this. Um, so I think as far as like the fans won because I think people been begging for this for for the longest. One in one in, you know, two of the biggest stars to go at it, you know, and, and not try to, you know, read between the lines of sneak disses or whatever. It's like you got you got what you wanted. Fans, you got what you wanted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like don't complain now. You got two of the, the biggest stars. gave us an album worth of music. Yeah. Like so um in two days, in three days. In two days. You know what I'm saying? The fans won. You know, at the end of the day, the fans won. You know, um, 
no harm, no foul, and then it was all it, it was all kept on you know on record, you know, and that's that's the beauty of just seeing two greats doing doing what they do best. It was awesome, uh, Damar. This has been a pleasure. We appreciate the time so very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the off season. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back. It. Appreciate it, bro.